Have you ever come up short when you finish your quilt top and don't have enough quilt backing? I have, but I found a really great solution that works perfectly for me. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and we're going to change a quilt backing shortage into free fabric. Sound too good to be true? I've done it. I'm going to show you. We're going to take what you have. We're going to make it into something amazing and you will finish with an absolutely gorgeous quilt. So let's get started. There was a time when I would buy yards and yards of fabric just to make sure I had enough for the backing. And then I would have extra and I'd make borders and I just had lots of yardage that I didn't always have use for. So I've changed the way I do my backings. And one of the ways is making a scrappy backing. And I'll take pieces, you know, fat quarter size and either find a way to piece them together or create an alternate design and it's a lot of fun to get creative with your backings. Now the other thing that I've done recently and you may remember this from maybe two months ago I put two quilts together made it reversible and so one quilt is the front so to speak and the other is the back. Now this whoops let me kind of move things out of the way here this pattern is the all blocked in pattern. It's a free pattern that I, I have available. It's one that I designed and it's made from fat quarters. This is one block. They're like a 14 inch square and you use six fabrics per block. Use your fat quarters. And so each fabric within the block, each of the um, one, two, three, four, five pieces are going to be different fabrics. And then you also have your accent strips. It's a wonderful pattern to work with, especially if you like fat quarters and mixing up your fabrics. And then I also like to do a border. I like a border on one side. It makes a statement. It really brings all the colors and the blocks and the fabrics together. And so this was side one, and I really liked how it turned out. And then... I had another quilt. Here are the two quilts used in this reversible quilt. And you'll notice each of them has a border. Now this one I created the quilt top with the border included. And this is my all blocked in pattern. I really like a border down one side because I can then pick up all the colorful uh, blocks within the quilt. And it just really works well for me. It also offsets the side a bit so it's not long and narrow. I prefer it a little more of a square rectangle than really long. And so therefore, this is just a perfect solution. This can also work, though, if you need to add on fabric for a backing. You can put a panel like this down one side or the other, or you can put it somewhere within the middle of the backing, generally not. I wouldn't suggest dead center, but off center one side or the other usually looks quite nice. This is the quilt that in this case I needed to add on to. This was a square and I needed to get some extra distance here as you can see when they're side by side. And this is the piano key border that was added. And these two amazingly go really well together. They have the black and white background in common, even though this is far darker, where these have more of the lighter backgrounds. But they both have the pink and the reds, and that border ties them together. I just love it. I think it looks wonderful, and together it makes a great finished quilt. All these are half square triangles. I made them into flying geese, and I was doing a tutorial on half square triangles, and this was the pattern I ended up with. I really like how it looked. And it's a lot of fun to put them together going every which way. But what I did is I used extra fabric from this quilt that I had made and used them for the backgrounds of my flying geese. So this works really well for a reversible quilt for the two to go together because the colors are very similar and they have some common fabrics. Though you don't have to do that. You can make them completely different but it's just the way I wanted to go with it. Now you see here where I have this border and I have the narrow strip which I absolutely love not to mention these peonies aren't they gorgeous you gotta love the K facet florals the the peonies are just wonderful and so with that 
I did the same on this side. Let me see. I have it here. There it is. My flying geese quilt was about five inches short. And so I made a piano key border, but I also added this strip just like the front has. And I don't know how it happened, but I had the same fabric. So this same strip is on both sides. So that again ties it together. But what I did is I took all these leftover pieces and I strip pieced them together and cross cut them. And I inserted some pinks along the way and a few of the dark black ones. And it came out beautiful. This works so well. Even if you just need to enlarge your quilt. But if you're enlarging a backing, this is a great way to go. Take the leftover fabrics that you have from the front. And like I said, run them in strips. And then cross cut however much you need. Just make sure you allow for enough in order to give you some trimming room because you're going to want to quilt it and then trim it. And if you cut yourself too short, you're going to be in the same situation where you started. And we don't want that to happen. But um, adding a strip like this can work. There's so many things that you can do. So I love this and I love how it turned out. And I'll show you some pictures of this um, at the end of the video. I'll do some full size shots for you. But I'm doing this same kind of quilting again I have two quilts that I'm going to put together and I absolutely love them so this is one that oh, you'll love this this is such a simple nine patch quilt but what I did was put it on point and again I'll do all the full size shots at the back so you can see so here's my nine patch right here and they're all charm squares so it's very easy to do and I have this wonderful um, background fabric that I really, really love from Art Gallery Fabrics. It's from their Vert collection. So it's a bit creamy with a little bit of a green print. And it just fits with this, this whole scheme of this particular color beautifully. And I, I kind of like to make quilts that don't have lots of matching seams. So if you have a nine patch, what do you put next to a nine patch so you don't have matching seams? Well, a four patch. So I took the floral prints and I cut some larger squares using the same background and made a four patch. So it's a nine patch, a four patch, a nine patch, and I just do that all the way around. And it makes a very simple quilt. Then, just because I thought it would be great fun, I added the triangles on the side so that we could put it on point. And this is just a great way to finish a quilt. A simple quilt looks so much more elaborate and, and really stunning when it's set on point. There's something about that, that angle that really attracts our eye. So this is the first side. Then let me show you the other quilt that I had to uh, pair up with this. This is a quilt I made this past summer. And it's a panel quilt, which is something I've not done much of before. But I love these florals. I love the fabric. And I just, you know, wanted to make something. And so I did a basic, um, the quilt is essentially kind of like a giant, nine patch and I have my panel in the middle and I surrounded it with charm squares and then e there were four smaller panels that each went in the corners like this so I didn't have enough fabric to create anything on the outer sides between these panels so I used low volume now this is another way to fill in some open areas in your quilt is create a background get something that you like and piece it together. Now, doing this, I, I incorporated scraps of my fabric. So it sort of ties everything together. And I used creamy to white fabrics. I didn't, I used a couple darker pieces, but only because they either had greens in them or they had a color that that pulled out of what was already in the quilt. And there's a lot going on. I didn't want to get too, uh, too wild and crazy but this pretty yellow is in here and some greens and of course the dots and like I said a lot of these are actually from the quilt itself and 
I really like how this turned out. But when I put these two quilts back to back, this one is about four inches short on one side. Actually, it's about three inches, but I'm going four, so I'm going to add five. And that should give me plenty of room. And with that, what am I going to do but replicate this charm square border? Now, this is the border on the panel side, and it happens to be the quilt that is short that I have to add to. So what I have done is I found some fabrics that are very similar to the colors that are in here. So this is a speckle and this is a speckle. This is a batik, but we do have, you know, this block in particular, every color's in that. So I can get away with a lot. I had a few pieces of some of the prints and this is one of the, oh, here's the other yellow. They're together. Um, so I have a couple batiks, I have some speckles, and I have some prints. And I cut five inch squares. I needed about a dozen on each side. So what I'm going to do is I took my five inch squares and I sort of, you know, mix them up. I'm going to sew them into strips, add them to each edge. So I'm adding five inches to each side, which is way more than what I need, but that's okay. I'd rather have more than not enough. And then that way I will have plenty to trim off and who knows, I may use it for something else. But then I also thought it would be pretty to emphasize this fabric. So these will be my cornerstone. So each corner will have this print. And this is just going to add so much to this particular quilt, but it's also going to give me that added dimension that I need to make both of these fit together. So get creative when you're thinking about how to either make your quilt larger or your quilt back larger. Um, which, whatever the case may be, find what you have on hand, use what was left over, find some more pieces that will kind of fit in and work with it. They don't have to be exact matches. There's absolutely no batiks here, but I brought in some batik fabrics and they work out really well. This and then my yellow one. And it's just fun. It adds more interest and anything that you do that's going to bring interest to your quilt is only going to enhance the design and doing a border like this i mean this is kind of an extravagant border i don't know that that's what we necessarily call it but piecing this is you know a great way to use up leftover fabrics and it just looks beautiful i can't wait to see this finished so let me get some of these pieces together and i'll show you where we're going with this and here's my strip. I actually made four of these. These are going to be the side borders that will extend the dimension of my quilt. So I have a larger backing in order to get this baby quilted. And they all, all four pieces have the same colors. Some are in a little different order. And then what I'm doing is I will sew this. Actually, I'll turn it this way so the colors aren't exactly the same. And I'm going to then add a cornerstone as I go around each corner joining my strips. And let me show you, I have this end done. And so we have our border, which is adding five inches on each side. Like I said, that's more than what I need, but that's okay. I'd rather have more trim it off. And then I have this piece to use for something else. So kind of double duty here. And then here's the other cornerstone on this side. You will notice that my five inch squares did not fit exactly, which is fine. I could have gone through and cut them down to maybe, you know, four and three quarters or something like that. But for me, it was, it was fine just to have a sh one shorter square where it joined up in the corner and that worked out great. So everything is set to go. I'm going to add my last strip. Oh, here it is. The last strip to the bottom. And then I have this finished quilt piece that I'm going to use for the backing. And then once everything is basted, put together, I'm going to quilt it. 
and I'm thinking, hmm, not quite sure, but I have some ideas about how I'll do that. Well, I'm ready to quilt my reversible quilt, and I'm going to do some circle quilting. I have some brand new quilting gloves. I'm so excited. So when I do a circle quilt, I generally will start close to the center, but not exactly in the center. I like working just a little bit off center, just because it sort of adds a little different look to it. And um, it's not quite so symmetrical. So both sides of this quilt has squares and rectangles. And I don't want to try and do straight stitching along any particular line because it's not going to line up on both sides because they're, they're obviously the, the pattern is, is different, uh, different sizes. So with that, I thought I'll go circular and it'll kind of catch everything along the way. The challenge for me is always starting a circle quilt. And I am using a circle that I drew right here. And it's, it measures about an inch and a quarter. And you can use anything. I find a spool of thread works really good. They come in multiple sizes, so you can try different sizes. The larger the center circle, the easier it is to start, just so you know. Um, don't start with the tiniest one first. Now, I'm going to be sewing in this direction, so I'm going to sort of pull my fabric that way so it'll be easier to turn. It's the first two rows that are a challenge because they're small and there's a lot of quilt here. This quilt measures, I think it's about 63 inches. And so there's 30 inches on each side of this. And I've got to, you know, push all that into the uh, throat of my machine. So as we're working around, I'm going to take it slow initially and then we'll speed up and then I'll put my guide on. Actually, let me go ahead and insert my guide because I do have my walking foot in and now I'm going to put my guide in and I'll set that width once we get to that point. But right now I just want to go around my circle. I've set my quilting stitch to a 3.0, so it's just a little bit bigger than what I usually sew with. And then I'm going to kind of get myself set where I'm going to start. I'll put my needle down and pull that thread up because I want the bottom thread to come to the surface. Otherwise, it's very easy to end up with a knot underneath. So we're going to pull these both to the side together and I will hold them in place while I get started. All right, so I just want to make sure my needle is going to go down on my line. I'm going to back up just a little bit. Right there. Okay, here we go. I'm going to just let those stitches be close in the beginning. And then I'm going to slowly go around the edge. I'm holding my fabric out taut so that I don't get any wrinkles. Now, initially, don't be surprised if you can only go two or three stitches at a time. Excuse me, I may be bumping this periodically. It's tight quarters here. But you may be um, only able to go around a few stitches at a time, and that's okay. Once you get the hang of this, you'll be able to do a little more. All right, I'm going to continue going around my circle. And you'll notice that I have to stop periodically to kind of put my fabric where it needs to be. And that's, sim whoops, excuse me, that's simply because it's, it's tight quarters and making these small, sharp turns uh, requires that the fabric move around more frequently. Now I'm going to just work my way around here and you'll notice as I do this, I'm kind of getting inside my circle there, you'll notice what I do is I get my fabric sort of in place where I want it and I make sure it's all flat and I don't have any wrinkles underneath because you can generally feel that through the quilt sandwich if you've got any large um, wrinkles in there that could become a problem. 
And what I'll do is I'll put my hands, like if you're looking at this as a clock, like six is down here, then this is a four and this is a 10. And then what I do is I just spin until I can't maneuver it anymore. And then I stop and I make an adjustment and I work my way around until I get back to the top. Now I do have a bit of an elliptical circle here. I didn't quite get in on the line exactly where I needed to be, but that's okay. It's mostly round <laughs> and, and we're going to uh, we're going to make up for that. So I'm going to pull this through. And I just want to get across that initial stitching line where I started. There we go. Okay, now once the circle is complete, just smooth out your fabric. And I've gone around a full circle already, so I'm having to maneuver my quilt as I go. And again, like I said, that's going to be the challenge initially until you work your way out a little bit and some of these edges will become more manageable because you won't have quite so much stuck inside your machine. Okay, now my goal is to run a one and a half inch circle around and around and around, just do a spiral. But from this starting point, I need to mark where I'm going to sew to in order to get a kind of a round circle. So I'm going to come out. So again, if we use like a clock, if this is 12 o'clock right here, I'm going to come around to three o'clock and come out half an inch. And then I'm going to come down here, which would be at six o'clock and I'm going to come down a full inch. And then as I get to the other side, I will come out to my inch and a half because when I come up here at the top, that's where I want to be is at my inch and a half. Okay, so those little marks just help me to maneuver, manage, see where I'm going. It, it gives me a direction and helps me to get into the what do I want to say the the rhythm of, of where I'm heading. Now the other thing is I want to set my guide to an inch and a half. So once I get there it'll be good to go. All right. And then once I do the first probably two rounds, I won't need to do any marking. I'll just rely on the guide and we'll just go from there. Okay, so let me go ahead and let's work on getting this first round in right there. And here we go. I am crossing over the previous stitching by maybe about a quarter of an inch, just so that I lock that in place. And as we move around, I need to feed my quilt through as well as turn it. And again, I always stop with your needle down so that your thread uh, continues in the same spot as you're sewing. And just kind of keep an even distance from that circle visually as best you can. And we want to turn around into this spot here where we know we want to make our curve and pull the quilt along. Now the other thing I do is before I start sewing circles is I'll practice a few circles. I keep some um, scrap pieces like this and here's my circles that that I sort of did a quick quick round um, swirl or two with and it just sort of engages that muscle memory so that your hands and mind and shoulders and body and everything knows, knows what to do and where to go. All right, I do want to put one more mark here. Um, whoops, got 
all kinds of fabric and all sorts of stuff here. So we're going to go at one and a half ish. I may come in a little and that's okay. Um, if I make too sharp a turn, then it becomes very obvious and I, you know, it, it doesn't look as attractive. I want to keep a nice even curve as we go. So I'm going to kind of hang on to my fabric here and spin it around and pull my quilt through as we go. And I can tell it's already getting easier because I, I'm able to keep this center area flat. I do want to turn it just a little bit more and pull that fabric through. So like I said, initially it's, it's a lot of maneuvering in order to get where you want to be. So I'm going, what, about five or six stitches at a time here. And pull this next section through. There we go. There we are. And I would rather be on the inside of my line than on the outside. Because that means my curve is going to be a bit tighter than wider and that way it doesn't get too lopsided all right here we go so we want to come up and join this one here and we're just going to work our way around Just about making our first round here. And I'm going to put my gauge down so that as I come around, yep, it's at one and a half, so that's good. I'll be uh, in place just to follow along the previous stitching. Okay, my goodness. It's a lot of quilt. I can't imagine doing this on a full-size quilt. I mean, this 60-ish inches is uh, a lot to maneuver, but I do love the way this looks. It is so pretty when it's done. And we're coming around where we're going to join up and start following our previous stitching line and not have to worry about any markings. And just kind of tuck everything nice and straight. I'm still only going a few stitches at a time. It will start to lengthen out here shortly. And in part, that's due to all the um, quilt fabric I'm having to move around. If you do the small sample practice pieces, that's a great way to practice initially because then you don't have all this to worry about and you're just focusing on doing the sewing. And once you get that down and you're comfortable with it, then dealing with the rest of um, the quilt isn't quite so challenging. But, you know, don't start with a huge quilt initially. Start with some small pieces, maybe pillows or placemats, even a baby quilt. But even a baby quilt, I mean, if you go up to 40 inches, that can be a challenge for your first time around. So don't, uh, don't over, overdo yourself and get discouraged. And you can see that I am far from being an expert at this. Um, I've, I kind of managed to muddle through and get the general idea of what I want, but I've, I've got a circular pattern going and I'm happy with that. So 
If I can just get around one more, this is all going to be much easier because I can sew more at one time and then it'll, it'll start moving quickly because you can do a quilt this way pretty darn fast. All right, let me put that through on the other side. Yeah, once you uh, get those first couple rounds in, it does move quite well. And Oh, I didn't put my needle down. There we go. All right. So I'm to a point now where my guide is going to follow right along that stitching line and will keep me on track so that I will keep an even distance with all my rows of stitching. You see how much more I'm able to stitch now. And it's only going to increase as I, uh, as I move around. Let's see if we can get this next circle going. The other thing is you're going to feel like you're hunching over and leaning into the quilt. Make sure you hold your shoulders back because if you crunch up into this, you're going to be awfully sore after the fact. Just keep your shoulders and your back loose and relaxed and let your hands and your forearms do the work. I'm anxious to see how this looks. This has been fun pulling all this together. Both quilts are so pretty. Whoops, I got a little off there. Both quilts are so pretty that I think they're going to make a wonderful pair together in the same finished piece. All right, let me go ahead and work around here and we'll see where we are at the end of this row. And I've made two full rounds, so here's my center circle, my first round, and here's my second, and I'm starting on a third. And as I work my way around, I just pause and adjust and sew, then pause, adjust, and sew, and, and that's just sort of how, how this works. But with every row, I can sew a little more, and that's going to speed things up quite a bit. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera, but but we're all in here together. The quilt is wrapped around me, and the camera's right in the middle, and, and uh, that's just the way it is. But I want you to be able to see what's going on. Now, take a look at this. I want you to see... This is not perfect. There are lots of imperfections. There, these are not the smoothest lines, but upon just a, a close look, all anybody's going to see are circular quilted lines, and that's all we want them to see. They can look up close and they can find little spots that are here, there, and whatever, and that's okay because, hey, I did this myself. I'm having fun with it. I'm always learning. And, uh, you know, the more practice I get at everything, the better I become. And so I just need to sometimes bite the bullet and say, okay, let's go. Let's do this. And I'm hoping you also want to try that. Just jump in and go for it. Because it's a lot of fun. And every new thing that you learn just expands your capabilities and your creative, uh, what do I want to say, your creative output, because the more you know and the more confidence you have in doing different things, the more adventurous you're going to become and creating even more wonderful designs. So don't hold yourself back. Just, just do it. And uh, that's like, you know, it's a couple of my very first <laughs> rag quilts. Don't go out of the house. There's no pictures of them anywhere. <laughs> hey, 
And it's not that the rag quilting was a problem, but it's the fabric choices. Oh my goodness, it just did not work well at all. And like I said, they, they are ugly quilts. But my husband and I have them on the couch and we love them. The grandkids always snuggle up in them when they come and visit. So they are well loved and frequently used despite the imperfection. So just just keep quilting. Keep, keep going at it and seeing what you can create. And you will be amazed in retrospect, looking back, how your quilting changes, how it evolves, and what you're capable of doing and, and your confidence level. And you'll look back and go, oh my gosh, I remember that first one. I tell you, my very first video is out there, and as much as I want to take it down, it's like, no, I need to leave that there. <laughs> it keeps me humble. <laughs> and, I mean, it has like 10 or 11,000 views. I can't imagine people have watched it. Uh, it's two and a half years old, so, you know, folks run across it from time to time, and it is just a disaster. But it helps remind me that I've come a long ways, I've learned a lot, I still have tons to learn, but it's a fun adventure along the way. And, you know, having those memories and those reminders, uh, you know, keep us, keep us in check. And uh, it's like, yeah, no, there was a time I couldn't do it at all. Now I can do it better, and there's definitely room for improvement, and I know I'll see that too. So I'm going to go ahead and quilt a little bit more. Then I will come back in a couple rows when it's getting easier to turn around so we can accomplish more without so much starting and stopping. And I'm moving along quite nicely. I'm just beginning round five. So here's one, two, three, four. So I'll start number five. And it's getting a lot easier to maneuver this fabric under the uh, inside the throat of my machine because as I get closer to the outside there's less fabric on the inside here that I have to uh, have to maneuver and that really helps lighten the load and quicken the pace so I'm just moving along you can see I'm going faster and farther which is great and because this is a big square and I'm trying to quilt it in circles, it takes a lot of uh, adjustment along the way. But it's going great and I'm really happy. I tell you what I'm really pleased with is this center spiral. And this can be a challenge when you come around this first circle and then kind of keep that round as you're getting bigger to meet the dimension for your larger outer circle. And I found if I take and and pace myself, remember I did the half inch, then a one inch, and then an inch and a half, so that I gradually increase. If you try and increase it too much, you get this funny elliptical egg. And that's kind of what I did on my, uh, my first couple. And then I realized, slow down, take, take a, a wider or a longer, longer curve, you know, take a longer... Uh, what do I want to say, a longer distance in order to make that turn and you'll be much happier. So the key here is don't be in a hurry. Just let it do its thing. And the walking foot is a necessity. I can't imagine doing this without a walking foot. That would be way too difficult because it really helps pull the fabric through. You'll also notice I don't have any pins because I spray basted and, and that's my go-to. I find that works really well no matter what kind of quilting I'm doing. I have this little tiny tuck right here. Do you see that? But it's I can pretty much push it out so that'll probably wash and dry itself into submission. But uh, as long as I don't have any big tucks, that's what I worry about. So let me pull this through. There we are. And we'll just keep going around. So I'll finish this round. 
and then I'll work to the outer edge. And I don't know if you notice or can tell by the way I'm doing this. This hand sort of stays here and it just sort of pivots. This is the one that does the moving. And that way I'm keeping this straight so my turn or my curve is sort of where it needs to be. And then this hand is pushing the excess fabric so that I can uh, maneuver right where I need to be. All right, I'll be back in a couple more rows. Well, it took me a couple hours to run out of bobbin thread, and I have about 15 rows or circles of quilting, so it's coming right along, but I wanted to show you how I deal with the bobbin. So this is where I stopped, and I let those threads just sort of hang there. But then when I started with my new threads, I came back about a quarter inch over what I had already stitched. And so I restarted here. I brought my threads from the bottom to the top and I sewed right there, which I'll clip those off now. And then I sewed over these as well. And while I'm doing this sewing, I'm holding all these threads to the side so they get caught up in the sewing. And then I get this nice, smooth stitching here. And look at that on the back. You really don't even notice that. You have to look up really close to see that that's double stitched over about a quarter of an inch. So that works out really well. And I have, um, I don't know, about another 12 inches to go. So what is that going to be? About eight rounds. And then once I get to that point, I'll start finishing off the corners. I'll show you how that works. And then we'll get everything finished. And it's going to be time to square the quilt up, trim it, and bind it. Oh my goodness, we are so close. I can't wait to see this all done. I absolutely am thrilled with how this is coming out, and I'm very excited. Okay, let me keep on quilting, and I'll be back. This is the quilt back I'm working on today, and it was a little bit shorter around the edge um, by about three-ish inches, so I just took charm squares and made this border. Now, I cut about half the charm square off, but I wanted to have enough in order to baste my quilt and, and do all those things. So it made sense to take it out to a full five inch. And then afterwards, look at that, how well this ties in with this center border. So we have the charm squares, but then we have the little patchwork border with the yellow and the patchwork here. And even though I chose the yellow here, it wasn't intentional to pick up on this. That was just a serendipitous choice, and it worked out great. So I love how this turns out. While it was intended to be the quilt back, I think this is going to be the quilt front. <laughs> and and the pink one will uh, will end up being the back. But at, at the least, it's a uh, reversible, which is fantastic. And that's a wonderful choice. But you can see how the circle quilting looks, too. I just love that, especially when there's a lot of busyness going on in the quilt as far as the patchwork piecing. We have all this uh, scrappy patchwork, and then we have panels, and we have tiny blocks and charm squares and more panels. So the, the circle quilting just really ties it all together, and I love how this turned out. This is just so very pretty, and I love it. I'm really happy with it, and I hope you enjoyed watching this and picked up a few ideas about how to finish your quilts and you know, get creative with your quilt backing. Maybe you're going to start out and just create your own quilt back and not just maybe enhance one or make it bigger or whatever the case may be. But don't let yourself be stopped when you think you don't have what you need. Dig a little deeper. You have lots hidden away in one place or another. There's always some fabric to be found. And think about it. The, the good part is once you use that fabric, there's room for more. And that'll be 
more for a new quilt, not for a quilt bag. Ooh, that's even better. So there you go. You've got some incentive to go dig through that quilt pile, that fabric pile, and see what you can come up with. So thanks so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this. It was great fun for me, and I'm so glad to have another quilt finished. Have a great rest of your day.